right, so we just finished over there and we moved to the back towards the stern of the vessel. What we're gonna talk about a little bit over here is some of the pollution hazards for the vessel while she's sitting at the pier. There's all sorts of things to look at here. We could look at hole growth. We're trying to look for barnacles, growth, marine life that might have built up on the hole while she's transited across the ocean since her last dry dock. Uh, but one of the big ones we really pay attention to here are hole discharge points. This chem boat, she's gonna have a few major ones. Going back towards the stern of the boat, you see the tug mark, and there's a couple of out, um, discharge points right after the tug marking. Those are for, namely, ballast water, or some of their Annex 2 and Annex 1 discharge points. We really wanna pay attention to those because if for some reason they've gotten oil or other pollutants in there, we'll start seeing signs of oil coming down the side of the hole, or if they're actively discharging, we'll actually see a sheen in the water. And this is something that would be the biggest concern for us because we wanna keep oil out of the waterway. We wanna protect the environment, we want it to be clean. Moving a little bit further aft, you'll see, uh, you can see here that there's gonna be a larger discharge port to, main, to run the machinery. That's all the cooling water that's running through the machinery. So at any given time, it's only a, a little bit of steel away from contacting pollutants like oil, antifreezes, anything like that. So if anything's leaking, you'll start seeing a sheen coming around those discharge points. Even going more further aft, you can't see it from here, but you'll see where the uh, propeller and the rudder shaft come out through the through hole penetrations. All the through hole penetrations, whether the, they're the rudder post, the shaft seal or any other type of fin stabilizers or anything like that, um, they're all risk points for discharge because of hydraulic oil, machinery oil, or anything like that. So if you go back there and you start seeing a little bit of bubbling under the water or you see a sheen forming on the water, it's a, it's a sign, it's a hint that something might be wrong. Pay attention to those. If you start seeing a large sign of pollution, talk immediately to the master, talk to the chief engineer because he's gonna know the plant the best. Worst comes to worst, call for help back from your building. IMD pollution experts, they might be able to help you sort out the, the issues that you're seeing. And you'll learn more about that as you gain experience moving along with your training. All right, so we made our way up to the bow of the ship here so we can see a little bit more about the anchor. If, if you look behind me, you're gonna see a really, really hefty anchor housed up in the house pipe of the bow of the ship. Solus is pretty simple when it comes to the anchor. They've gotta have one. It's more the classes, the classification society's job to make sure that it's suitable and how many anchors they're supposed to have. When we're looking at the anchor, we wanna make sure one, it's there, and two, it's not fouled up by mud or organisms or anything like that or any type of discharge coming through the pipe that has oil in it. Um, it's very rare to see that, but it's something to be aware of and always keeping your eye on. All right, so while we're up at the bow of the ship here, it's a great opportunity to talk about some of the other things that I really like to look at. We, talk, we discussed the low line and some other markings earlier, but up here you can see the forward draft marks and these are really helpful because they help the chief officer and the master of the vessel direct how they trim the vessel with ballast, um, cargo loading, and how they wanna set up the ride of the ship. And it's really simple. If you just look at it, you'll see contrasting color marks that tell you how, how much the water line is above the keel of the ship. In this one, it's a foreign deep draft vessel, so it's gonna be in meters. At the top, 12 meters. Then you see the large 10 meters, eight, and it just goes down. If you look at the stern of the ship, you'd see the same thing. If things look a little trimmed by the bow or riding, um, sitting heavy in the stern, have the talk with the chief officer or the master. They'll be able to tell you if they're um, currently shifting ballast or taking on cargo and they're working on compensating that. It's their job, but you can have that conversation with them and see what their plan is and kind of uh, learn a little bit about their operations at the same time. I also like to pay attention to some of the other hole markings and kind of working forward and aft, 
um, your first one you see is this upside down P. The upside down P just means that it has a bulbous bow. The bulbous bow is really kind of cool because you don't see it. But when you see that mark, you know that a part of the ship is extending beneath the waterline forward of what you're seeing right now. And the whole purpose of it is just to have a more efficient hole for transit across the ocean. The next mark after there looks like a prop, and it's probably what you think it is. It's marking that they have a bow prop, a bow propulsion system directly below that marking, below the waterline. The whole purpose is to help the bow of the ship press against the pier and assist that mooring evolution. But because of that, there's some through-hole penetrations and another potential risk for pollution. So take a look for sheening of hydraulic oil and stuff like that. And then moving aft, we talked a little bit um, already about the tug marks. These are reinforced areas of the hull where the tug is designed to marry up with the vessel. And the other one that's really knit, kind of uh, something keeping your back pocket are the hull, um, the cargo compartments. As you move aft on the vessel, you'll see these little white lines by the deck. And each one of these is going to say, this is cargo area one, cargo area two. And as you move down the vessel, you'll get an idea of how the vessel's laid out. One, it makes it for a much easier conversation when you're talking to the captain saying, I want to head up to the number one tank or whatever. But two, it also gives you a good idea of what might be below deck. It gives you a little bit of a visual reference. On this vessel today, we don't really have much for side doors, scuttles, or ramps or anything like that. But during your training, you might see some vessels like roll-on, roll-off carriers, cruise ships, some, sometimes some container ships, they'll have um, doors or access points just above the water line. These are gonna be really important to watch uh, when you do your pier walk, your vessel examination. Uh, you're gonna be looking for water tightness, uh, signs of them not closing properly, and signs of pollution. Uh, there's hydraulics involved, especially with roll-on, roll-offs. There's vehicles moving back and forth across these ramps, so it's a high risk of pollution and runoff on these points. So, Unfortunately for this vessel, you, we don't have a good example, but during your training, pay attention and uh, learn a little bit more about the side scuttles, side doors, and other access points. All right, today we completed initial visual examination of the vessel. We, the trainee identified any hazards, cautions, PPE when conducting the item. Trainee evaluated holes for signs of pollution, illegal discharge, Trainee evaluated hull condition, including ribbing, watertight integrity, corrosion, access stability, or other items. The trainee identified verified condition of mooring lines and presence of rat guards. The trainee verified condition of pier side bits, cleats, etc. Trainee verified hull for required markings. The trainee examined side scuttles, shell doors, and cargo ramps. Trainee verified presence and condition of anchor, anchor chain. Trainee observed vessel discharges or signs of previous discharges. Trainee verified vessel's means of escape or access. Trainee described any tips or unique considerations when completing initial visual examination of the vessel. So at this point, if you have any further questions, or want to learn anything about any of these topics, it's a great chance for you to go talk to your local verifying officer.